So I'll begin. Thank you for joining us for the Reading Agency Presents series. I'm absolutely delighted. This is our first illustrator that we've had all year, actually, um, and it is the award-winning Yurong. Uh, Jake is going to um, introduce Yurong in a minute. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick introduction, to, uh, even introduction to Jake. Uh, Jake is a um, is the awards executive for the Yoto Carnegie Medals, and he is uh, an activist and advocate for reading and getting young people and children across the country reading. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to Jake and Yurong. Just a bit of uh, housekeeping just before, um, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> just a little bit of housekeeping before we begin. If you've got any questions, you can pop them into the Q&A box. Um, just bear in mind that if you pop them into the chat, there will be quite a lot of comments um, and we might not see them. So please, if it's a question specifically that you would like answered, just pop it into the Q&A. Um, just to begin with as well, if you could let us know where you're joining from, um, if particularly if you're a school or library, just let us know where you're joining us from. We'd love to see that. Um, and since I don't have to host this one, I can read and like all the comments. Um, so yeah, um, there will be a Q&A at the end. Um, Jake will be asking you wrong your questions um, and yeah sit back uh, grab a drink or yeah just enjoy thank you take it away Jake thank you very much Chris Ni hao. welcome everybody to our Chinese New Year special event with award-winning illustrator you wrong as well as finding out about your wrong and her work we'll be discovering more about Chinese New Year having a sneaky peek at flying high you wrong's new book which publishes tomorrow and there will also be a chance to make your own special kites in our activity. So teachers, make sure that you've got your coloured paper, pens, glue and string at the ready so that we can all get creative. There will be a chance, as Chris says, to ask you wrong any questions you have. So please do put those into the question box. You're wrong. It's a real pleasure to welcome you. You've won the Golden Apple Award. And you are the author of the illustrator of Shulin's Grandpa and The Visible Sounds, both of which have been shortlisted for the Yoto Carnegie Medal for Illustration. So it's a huge pleasure to welcome you. And to start with, I wonder whether you can tell us how many books have you actually illustrated now? Uh, hello, everybody, and thank you, Chris, and thank you, Jake. I'm just, I'm very happy and I'm honored to be here to share some stories stories with all of you. Uh, in terms of how many books, possibly more than 20, I would say. And I also I think possibly more than 25 different uh, languages. Wow, that's a huge number. And when did you actually start illustrating? I started illustrating Possibly, I think maybe back when I was in China, but I really started uh, to, to illustrate the children's picture books when I graduated uh, from uh, Royal College of Art. Yeah. And there, guess who was my tutor? Who was your tutor? Quentin Blake. Wow, that's amazing. So Quentin Blake people will probably be very familiar with. Famous illustrator in and of his own right. Also the first children's laureate in the UK. And he's very well known as being the illustrator of Roald Dahl's books. So what was it like being tutored by Quentin? It was a very interesting story. Um, Quentin Blake was the uh, head, dean of our department. So when I joined RCA in 1998, he retired. But he set, he set up an award called the Quentin Blake Narrative Illustration Award for students each year. So the first year when I joined RCA, I won the prize. And at that time, I didn't know who he, who he was. So the secretary of the office called me and said, oh, you must come because Quentin Blake is coming in to give you the prize. And I said, who is Quentin Blake? <laughs> so of course, nowadays in China, we have loads of Quentin's books. But back in 1990s, we barely had any of Quentin's book. So since then, of course, I got to know Quentin. He's just such fun to talk to him. So yeah. every time when he came back to college to give tutorial, so I always sign up the first one. And uh, because of him, and I think that's one of the main few reasons why I started to do children's picture books. 
That's brilliant. And do you still keep in touch with Quentin now? Yeah, 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 of course. I think a few oh. days ago, I just emailed his office because uh, uh, my other dean of our department came to Cambridge to visit me. So we talked about him. So he's now, Quentin is now 91 years old. Wow, that's amazing. And for you, Yuan, what's the best thing about being an illustrator? And also, what's the most challenging thing you find? Um, I mean, I, I I studied the art, pure art in China. Then, of course, I come to Royal College of Art. Actually, I didn't really plan to be a children's book illustrator or author. But one reason is because uh, Quentin became my tutor. So he was a big inspiration. And then, of course, Walker Books and then children. I have, um, I have three children. So these are all the inspirations. But uh, to be... To be honest, I thought about it, why I love to do children's books. I think the main reason is I love children. Yeah. I want to share. I want to share what I see in the world with children. Brilliant. And how about the most challenging thing? Is there something that you find quite difficult or that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because the first book I... I uh, did it with Walker books, took me four years. So there I learned how to do picture books for children. I would say the most challenging part is uh, don't think about myself as an artist. Like I graduated from Royal College of Art, such a prestigious college. No, I have to think about I'm doing a book for children. I want the children to be my friends. And I have, I want to think about from children's perspective how to make a book, so that if to, now I think uh, I get the feeling and the spirit of it. But uh, when back like twenty three years ago when I started, that was really difficult. Certainly, that's brilliant. Thank you. And I know that you're speaking to us today from your studio. Um, that's very exciting to have a sort of glimpse of where you work. And you've very kindly taken some photographs of your studio. So I will share those now. And maybe you can talk us through these a little bit. So here goes. OK, so um, uh, during the before the lockdown, I had my studio built just uh, uh, as an attachment of the main house. So if you look at this picture, what I have most in the studio are plants and books. So this is the entrance to my studio and the end bit is a bifolding door. So you, if you go through the door is a garden. So what I love my studio, why I love it so much is why it's very connected to the garden. So make the studio almost like a part in the nature. So when I open the bifolding door, immediately I feel the energy from the a garden from the nature that is always so uplifting for me and another thing is you see if the weather is good the studio is full of beaming lights that make you very happy to start a day yes and is it important for your art that you have lots of really good light to work with yes definitely and okay. i have so many plants each plants they come uh, from different part of the world, they come with a branch or baby, and then they grow in my studio. So each of them has a good story to tell. Excellent. And do you have a favorite plant at all? Favorite? If if you see in this picture, yeah, just at the right left corner on the left, uh, left bottom corner, you see a, a like a branch like in the white pot under the mirror. Yeah. That is actually from a, a good friend, it's a studio in Beijing. And uh, uh, he gave me a big, big, like tiny, tiny branch. And uh, now it's actually much bigger than the one in the picture. Now it's double the size of the in the port. Wow. It, 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 I think she's very happy in my studio. Good, good. I really like the bushy one that's just behind that. Yeah, that one is, I think that one is from Germany. Uh, well, so let's move on and see some more pictures okay, of your yeah. studio.
Yeah, that is this one is also from Germany. This one must be 25 years old. So this is called the Kafa Lily. This is a mummy. And I try to pollinate the flower and the baby comes popping out from the seeds. So now I have many babies and oh, I wow. give the babies to friends as well. Oh, that's lovely. And I think I can see in the background, are they some cut out birds that you've made? Yes, that is um, uh, last year when I did an event at the British Library talking mm -hmm. about my book uh, about uh, magpie. So these are all the magpies magpie paper cut out hanging on the little ivy branch fantastic you um, can you can spot all the details jake <laughs> i've studied them very carefully <laughs> yeah let's move on again mm -hmm. so is this showing the area where you work is that where you tend to work in front of the garden yeah so this is a bit more into the studio so you can see if you look at the right side the right side is a table which I'm sitting in front now. And then the back one near the bifolding door, it's a table I practice my Chinese painting and the Chinese calligraphy. So you can see a special white sheet. It's a fabric on mm -hmm. the table. So you put the paper and the ink so that that white cloth can observe the ink if it leaks out of the uh, Chinese paper. Fantastic. Thank you. And let's move on again. Yeah, that is a, that is from the garden side to look into the studio. And uh, I'm so proud. Do you see on the wall there's a bookshelf? And underneath yeah. I have some uh, 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 special drawers. So this is uh, all from... Um, uh, my husband and my little boy, they made it be spoken for me. Mm -hmm. So it just fit into the size of the papers I use. And oh. I, I don't know whether you have noticed, I, I collect mirrors. I have so many mirrors in the studio. Is that, again, is that about the light or, or is there another reason why you like to collect? So I, I love mirror because mirror has a lot of stories. Of course, mirror cannot tell me. But over the years, so many people, the mirror has seen so many people. So this is one thing I like. Another thing is once you put a mirror on the wall, it actually expands the space. Yes. And you see each other opposite different mirrors. So this is what I like. It's almost a little bit magical. Yeah, no, definitely. It, it feels a really magical studio altogether. Um, I see the plant down in the corner here. I don't know whether my arrow is showing. Um, we call that a Chinese money plant. It is. It is Chinese money plant. But this is uh, almost like the uh, fifth generation of my mummy money plant. My mummy one, I cannot now put it in the studio because it's huge. It's almost like one and a half meters tall. And <laughs> it's I cannot hold it. I wow. have three very big ones like mummy daughter and a granddaughter so this is a great great granddaughter <laughs> gosh so it's a really old plant thank you let's move on again okay yeah so this is a table i said the table close to the garden where i practice um uh practice uh, chinese calligraphy yeah and i can see some brushes there the traditional brushes that you use for that yes. yeah and the paper we use is also quite a special it's not a paper we use here it's called a Chinese rice paper brilliant thank you I'm going to stop the chair there and yeah I know that you use paper cut a lot for your work can you tell us a little bit about paper cut and how you go about using it I have I have prepared a very special book here to show everybody it is not my work but this is where my inspiration comes from so in China, we have a very traditional folk art form, paper cut. So this is a book about uh, paper cut in color for bird and flowers, and also Chinese New Year zodiac animals. So I guess everybody knows, so this year we are still in the year of rabbit. But by middle of next month, we will 
entry into another new year, which is, Jack, do you know? Is, am I right in thinking it's a year of the dragon? Yes. So <laughs> next year is the year of dragon. So here I want to tell you a little bit about the Chinese paper cut. So if we look at this one, you can see two different types. One with color. So if I need to be very careful, if I take it out to show you. So can you see how delicate it is? Can you see? Yes, that's beautiful. So this is, yeah, this is like a paper cut. Oh, sorry, let me hold it. This is a paper cut on a white paper. So white Chinese rice paper. Uh -huh. And after you cut it, cut it, you put different colors on the top of it. It's almost like I painted the paper cut. Yes. It is actually very, very delicate, as you can see. I was going to say, it looks incredibly delicate. How long would it take to, to make a piece like that? And do you need special equipment? That is a good question, because there are different ways. You know, like a, a traditional craftsman. They live in the countryside. So each each new year, like now, so new year is approaching. A lot of people actually cut all this paper cut, put on the glasses of windows or glasses yeah. of doors. So it's a, it's a traditional it's a traditional celebration. So I would say if a skilled a skilled craftsman, possibly a few hours. But if you ask me to cut this, I would also possibly need a half day. Yeah, it's right. too delicate. I think it would take this, weeks and yeah. weeks. Yeah, so this is the one. Yeah, so it's a plum, uh, plum blossom, Chinese mm. stone, and I think it's a magpie. Fantastic. So this is one type. Another type of it is so this is the one tone paper cut. This is what I started when I started paper cut. So can you see? Yes. And can you tell what is the animal for the zodiac? So if I put uh, this here, is it better for you to look? Yes, that's looking clear. Um, Somebody is suggesting it's a rat in the in the chat. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. So rat is the first in the queue. Yeah. The to be the underline for the Chinese zodiac. So Chinese zodiac animals always start with the red. Okay. Red. So I'm going to show you this year, the dragon. So who knows, uh, anybody knows on the order, which order is dragon? So we start knows. with the red. And let me see, we start with the red and then we are coming to should I show you actually? Somebody's suggesting it's the seventh, is that right? Seventh? Uh let me let me check actually. I don't know. Somebody else is suggesting fifth. Oh who suggested fifth? Um that was a somebody called Lucy Goodhue. Lucy, you're right. It's fifth. So Excellent. Let, let me quickly show you. So this is a really beautiful book. So we started with red, yeah? So that's yep. one. Do you know what is this one? Is that the ox? The ox, so that's the second. I just needed to be careful to open. So here there's a bamboo and a pheasant, and that's the third. Which one is that? That the tiger. That's a tiger. And I have to say one. I'm cheating because somebody put them into the chat. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, we are very quick. And the fourth one is? Fourth one is rabbit. Is a rabbit, yes. So now... Comes the dragon. The dragon. So I have to take the dragon out to let you see. So together with the dragon, we have the phoenix. So in Chinese culture, phoenix and the dragon they always come together. So it's almost like a phoenix is a female, and yep. the dragon is a male. So can you now? Can you see like this? How beautiful it is. It is, yeah. Lots of people are saying how stunning and beautiful and gorgeous that is. It is. So this is the phoenix of his peony. And now we come to the 
dragon look how beautiful i just needed to be very careful how do i hold it not to damage it yes see and if i put the light on you see the shadow yep it's very strong but you see a little bit so yes that's, that's the magic of a paper cut yeah definitely somebody's asking whether that's a traditional dragon that is definitely a traditional dragon because Brilliant. Traditional Chinese dragon, if you look carefully, we always had a fireball to play. Yep. And then surrounded by clouds. So these are clouds, do you see? Yep. So this, And then if you look carefully, actually, the circle edge is a flower petal. Yes. Brilliant. Yeah. And somebody's asking us, is the color paint or is it ink? No, okay, so that's a really good question. I'm a, you are all looking at it very much in detail. So this one is cut in the Chinese white rice paper and then colored. So they, they are different colors to color them. Can be watercolor, can be Chinese ink color, can be. And this one, we cut it. This is, we cut from the red paper. Yeah. So this one is not a colored, it's a user color paper. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. And of course we have another seven animals. So that I will leave you all to think about who are they. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, I'm going to share my screen again now, you're wrong, and we'll yeah. see some of your books where you've used some of the the paper cut mm -hmm. yourself if that's okay yes please so just bear with me i just put the dragon and the phoenix in carefully so this is a collection of your wrongs books lots and lots of different books some of these are not available in the uk at the moment but others are um you're wrong do you have a any that are particular favorites out of these um Yes, so there's a book I um I particularly like it because it is in a form of a concertina. Yes. I should I show you now or when I show you the New Year poster? I show you. I can show you now. Should we have a quick? Let's, can we do it a little bit later? Because okay. we'll have to come out to sh to show. Um. So okay, if we yeah. move on and show some more of your books. Okay. Yeah. So this is a book about the smoke. So they are different languages. Um, yeah, you were saying that, was it 25 languages? You said yeah, yes. So wow. overall, I think I have um, uh, 25 different language editions over all my books. That's amazing. How does it feel to know that your books are being sort of read and enjoyed all around the world? I think it's just... Um, it's a joy. I would say it's a joy that you know that your work, your book is shared by everybody, no matter where are you in the uh, in the world. I yes. think that is a joy you can feel because it's almost uh, like um, I love doing book and the book, all the books are shared by different people. Mm -hmm. So this is a summer book. There are different... Yeah, this is also different editions. Yeah. And it's quite interesting to see the different covers on the different editions. Yeah, because it's, uh, I think in different countries, the editors always think about what color or what yeah. theme the readers would be most uh, challenged of. Mm -hmm. So that's why you can see like a different color tone and also different uh, book design or, or cover design. It's Definitely. actually very interesting. Each design behind the design, there are many reasons why they did it like that. Fantastic. Thank you. And this is quite a traditional story, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know the Disney films about Mulan? Mm -hmm. the Mulan is a very traditional hero in Chinese history. So she went to the army instead of uh, her elderly father. So she's um, like all all children in China grew up with Mulan and the Monkey King, of course. So these are two the two characters, almost like all children's dreams to be. 
And they are fun and brave and royal. Fantastic. Yeah, this is, oh, this is a, another book I did. This is a real paper cut. Yes. This is a real paper cut. You can see it's a one-tone paper cut. It's a traditional paper cut. Yeah, it's beautiful. You can see, you can see some of the editions, Arabic edition, it's, uh, the color is a mirror image. Do you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if we move forward, oh. So oh, no. <laughs> stop the share there. And yeah, thank you for, for showing us that. It's, yeah, really impressive. And on the 10th of February, I think it's going to be Chinese New Year. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, so the 10th of February is the first day of Chinese New Year, which is a dragon. 9th of February is the New Year's Eve for us. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. And I wondered whether you could teach us a, a New Year greeting. <laughs> okay, I'm prepared. So what I did is I made a... So that is a very, very common greeting. It means Happy New Year. So in Chinese, I made this. I, I, I know it's a little bit mirror image. So I made the Chinese dragon comes with this four characters called Xin Nian Kuai Le. So she means new. Nian yeah. means year. Kuai Le means happy. So it means New Year happy. But of course, in English, it's other way around the order. So this is the Happy New Year. You see the alphabet? So that is the Chinese pinyin. So mm -hmm. if you look at the pinyin, you will see Xin Nian Kuai Le. Xin Nian Kuai Le. Yes. But remember, Chinese, we have four tones. Mm -hmm. So you see Xin Nian Kuai. Le. Do you know what I mean? It's not a yes. xin nian kuai le. It's a xin first tone, then nian is up. So xin nian kuai le. Try it, Jake. Xin nian kuai le. Yes! Much <laughs> Brilliant. And I know from the chat that people are having a go at that. In yes, it's having well. a go. Right? Yeah, so it's, I say it once more. So first tone, second tone. Then down, down. We have a third tone is like this, but not in these characters. It's so, so it says, Xin Nian Kuai Le. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And I know that you've, you've shared with us some photos of some traditional food, Chinese New Year food. So we'll just, yeah. we'll have to whiz through this a bit because time is passing on quite okay. quickly. So, before you show the food, just let me uh, quickly show you some uh, special tradition uh, decoration for Chinese New Year. So here is a very special golden string embroidery. Can you tell what it is? Is that the dragon? Yeah, that's a dragon. Yeah, and that's here beautiful. Is a special Chinese character means blessing. And um, here, so this is like a Chinese red bag. I quickly show what we have here. So if I open the goodie bag, surprise. So first, we have a poster you can put on the refrigerator with oh, the wow. patterns and a word. So a character says spring. So this is a spring you can almost see. So uh, Chinese New Year is also called a spring festival. Yes. And now, this is very interesting. So this is very special. You see, in Chinese New Year, uh -huh. we always put uh, three pieces of calligraphy. So this is a tool. So imagine I'm a door, yeah? yeah. Imagine myself is a door. Beside the two doors, we always put the two, we call it the Dui Lian. So it's almost like two lines of uh, poems. Yes. Just all the New Year blessing, whatever you wish for. Mm -hmm. And in the middle, in the middle, uh, where is my middle one? In the <laughs> middle, we have that. Uh, 
this in the middle. Uh, so well, imagine uh, if I'm at the door, I have this on the top and both sides with the two red ones. Yeah. yeah. So this is a very, very traditional. And then for children, most special, can anybody guess what it is this? Does anybody want to have a guess and put it in the chat? Yeah, what they please think that have a guess. Be? Somebody's suggesting it's for money? Yes, but what do you call it? There's a special name for it. Yeah, somebody said money envelope. So it is in Chinese, we say red envelope. Ah, uh, okay. So you always, children always, Chinese New Year children always get money inside of the red packet. Fantastic. So this is what we really waiting for when we were kids. So now we can move on to the food. So now we'll move on to the food. Yes, let me share that. We will have to whiz through this a bit, you're wrong, because yes, yes, we, we need to leave time for... Yeah, okay. So here we go. So this is the New Year food I, I prepared with children. So you can see the traditional ones. Dumpling, can you see dumplings? Yeah. And then, dumpling. yeah, dumpling and then special meatballs. And then meatball covered by rice. Mm -hmm. So this are so dumpling. I would say is the most uh, traditional Chinese New Year food. Brilliant so one. And what's your favorite food to eat on New Year's? You wrong. I would say you know we have so many. So this is also New Year celebration. Different dishes. We always have so many to share. So in Chinese. Um, uh, culture we don't have a plate for ourselves we yeah. have so many dishes on the table and everybody shares lovely so it's a real mix it's a mix yes yeah so this is a dumpling so this is a the raw dumpling had not been just been made but not cooked lovely that's a special rice cake with sesame seeds yum this is another type of cake with okay. sesame seeds. Yeah, that is the one I talked about. It's meatball covered by rice. Fantastic. They are actually really yummy. This is <laughs> all the goodies my daughter made. So these are like a cookie with a peanut. Yep. And then uh, the cake with sesame seeds and then different types. Uh, I don't know actually what is what do we call it. Do you have similar things here? I think uh, it's, a, yeah. it's like it's almost like a donut, but a similar thing, but in different of form. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a rice ball. Do you see the rice ball? Uh -huh. Rice ball soup uh, with uh, cinnamon flowers. Oh, lovely. Okay, I'm going to stop the share there. Yeah. So we were talking a little bit about it being the year of the dragon. Yes. And you know, dragons play quite an important, they feature in your new book, Flying mm -hmm. High. So it feels like a good opportunity to talk a bit about Flying High. Yes. Uh, before you we introduce Flying High, just let me quickly show everybody this box. So this box, uh, my friend printed it. For, me, for us. So it's a Chinese New Year goodie box. So inside they have different uh, treats because it's a Ch Dragon New Year. That's why he printed a dragon and it says Happy Dragon Year. And on the side, so this is the dragon in the sea. So you see the waves around. Do you see? Yeah. So the two dragons, they are so beautiful. Look closely with the Chinese characters. And the next one, yes, the dragon here on the new book cover. Yeah, that's beautiful. So can you tell us a little bit about what Flying High is about, please? So Flying High is um, uh, a book about a little boy and his bird is called Wawa and uh, how they grow up together by flying kites. So this this kite in Chinese we call dragon head centipede body kite because it can be like over two hundred meters long. Wow! Yeah, if you see the real ones, can be like maybe 
uh, 10 meters long at least or five meters low i would say at least because the body is very long to fly high but the longest one can be few hundred meters long so there's always competition with drag which dragon kite is the longest but it's so difficult to fly so the book is about the boy and of course he's a bird this is a bird called a wawa and he was quite tiny like me when i was uh, 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 when I was little, I was also tiny. So then he is a little bit left out with a group, not letting him in to play the kite together. Yeah. But eventually he was inspired by nature. Everybody can be different. I can be small. I can be tall. I can be, um, I can, I can, uh, I can be climbing up the trees. I can go to the river to swimming. Everybody is different. You just need to be happy who you are. So he, when he realized, he started to love himself and enjoy himself. And what happened? Then he went to granny and grandpa, learned to make the most traditional dragon we call the swallow dragon with the patterns of fish. Yep. And together with his bird, they started to fly the kite in the festival. Wow. And he was cheered by the clouds because he realized he's just so happy how he is. <laughs> That's it's, fantastic. Yeah, it's a celebration, the end. Oh, that's lovely. Beautiful images. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, we've had a question about, um, you mentioned that the dragon kites can be up to 200 meters long. And somebody was asking, how many people would it take to fly a kite like that? That's a really good question. You need a, quite a few people. So because that this kite, when you put them together, all the body is basically a circle shape. So you can put it flat very easily. But when you start to fly this kind of kite, you need a people first put the kite on the ground and separate the discs. And each of them, you need to keep a certain distance, depending on how strong is the wind. And then, of course, you need people hold the head and other people in the middle to adjust the body direction. So it's a, definitely a teamwork. Yes. Only small ones. So in the book, I enclosed the end page. So this is this baby one. Baby one, you can fly yourself, but you cannot fly very high. But at least you can play it, but not like to very high and very long. So baby ones, you can do it yourself. Brilliant. And yeah, one of the classes are asking, what's the longest kite that you've ever seen? <laughs> To be honest, no, I have only seen the baby one. You've only seen baby ones. Excellent. Yeah. And it was really nice to see Wawa. Um, I was very excited to see Wawa when I first saw your book, because, of course, um, Wawa has made an appearance before. Yeah. So, OK. So if you will look at, uh, let me show the page of Wawa here. So this is Wawa. This is the, the bluebird is called Wawa. Yes. Yeah. And actually, the Wawa comes from my first picture book. Do you see the similarity here? Mm -hmm. So this is the first book. I talk, this is the first book and I used the traditional paper cut, one tone. Yeah. And added the pencil drawing. This is the Wawa. It's really interesting. So this book is published 10 years ago. Wow. So 10 years between this book and this book. And I'm just very happy to almost wake up Wawa from this book, <laughs> ask him to join us in this book and become our friends again. Yes. And I think one of the lovely things about the book is the sense of people coming together to fly their kites in the in the festival. Um, and I know that you've got an activity for us around making kites. We are kind of running fairly short on time. So I think if we can start the activity and what we'll also do alongside that, once the activity is underway and children are making their kites, 
I'll yeah. ask you some of the questions that would be asked and we can do it that way so that, yeah, we've got double the things going on. So could you tell us a little bit about the activity, the kite making activity? I have prepared and <laughs> I'm very excited to share with all of you. So because this book is about a kite and of course we cannot make the dragon kite because that world really takes ages to do. So if I just quickly show you here, this is how do you make a kite. So this side is a, a skeleton. Basically, you need to use a bamboo. You know, uh, the bamboo, the panda's favorite food, bamboo. So use bamboo, bamboo middle part, the bamboo body, and make it then very, very thin. You know, sometimes you see like a kebab stick and a chopper stick. So they are all made of by bamboo. So it's the same, you use a bamboo uh, sticks and you over the fire, you make them burned into different um, shapes. And then you need to put a, a silk or paper onto the disc and, a, and of course chicken feather. And then you paint it. So how to make this is very, very difficult. But of course we have so many different kites, someone some simple and some are very complicated. And I think if I show you this one, look, this is the most beautiful page. That's a favorite page with all different types of uh, kinds. Wow, yeah, that's such a lovely variety of kinds. And of course, we cannot make them here today. So <laughs> what we are going to make is a simple one. So I have made a card, yeah. Oh. Look what when I open the card, what do we say? Oh wow! Kite. So we have the kite with different color paper, and I want to introduce you particularly this one. This is actually my paper cut left out. So the purple color, I cut all the shape out. Can you guess what are these shapes for? Do you see? And then here as well. So I cut from yellow paper and yeah. I cut a lot of shape like this. Who can guess what is, what are these for? Somebody's suggesting scales? Uh, close, but something about like it's, something has loads, loads of like this shape. What is this shape? Think about it. Dragon? Uh, Somebody suggesting a dragon? It's actually not related to dragon. <laughs> something else. <laughs> pebbles. pebbles. Another oh, person okay. suggesting so pebbles. Leaves. Clouds. <laughs> Raindrops. <laughs> Getting lots of suggestions. Uh -oh. Fish. Uh -oh. Okay, here comes. Here comes the fish. Are you ready for me to show you? Yes. Oh, they are leaves. Yeah, so they are tree leaves. Yes, excellent. Do you see? Do you see? Yep. So these are the all the leaves I cut. And the one I showed you, it's like this. I cut all the leaves out from the purple paper. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now back to our kite making. So what we need is we need a few different color, color papers and I made clouds. My clouds is a little bit special because the clouds with Chinese characters. So I do it because it's Chinese New Year. So I want to show you some Chinese characters. And then of course we have a string, but you don't really need a string. You can just draw a string for the kite and then we put some uh, bow butterfly wings on the string. So yeah. if everybody if everybody has a paper prepared, so what we needed to do is um, if we have a, a slightly rectangular paper, so we what we do is we fold it into half, yeah? And then you just need to find a so on the open side, not in the middle dot, slightly up dot. So you basically, you what you do? Okay, I do this way. So you find the, not in the middle, a little bit up. 
So we cut one corner and we cut another corner. So it become a shape like this. And then we do the other ones the same. So we cut and we cut. So now if you look, you have three different colors, yeah? And what you needed to do is glue stick and then just put them together. So one, two, You see, so when you fold it, they are like this, mm -hmm. and when you open, they are together. So you get a wonderful 3D kite. Yeah, 3D kites. And then, of course, you needed to put a glue, oh, might come off, not very well, stayed together. So what you needed to do is on this side, you put a glue, and then, of course, you put it in the middle, of your card yeah. yeah so then of course you see you get the shape of this and if you want to make it like many layers you are you can make as much as you want yes so you have different colors so in this way when you close it it's close up and when you open up it pops up as a 3d Fantastic. Um, we're, we're being asked whether you could just go over that again for some of the schools. Oh, okay. So, okay. Um, go over again. So, uh, what I had is, um, I cannot <laughs> put this back. <laughs> so, I had a, like a almost a rectangular shaped paper, piece of paper. Then you fold it in half. And on this side... On this side, this this is a folding line. On this side, try to find a point a little bit. So if this is the middle of this, try to go over a little bit up. And what you needed to do is from this dot, cut this corner and then turn over another corner. Yeah. So when you open it, you have the shape of this. Brilliant. And then of course you have quite a few, as many as you want. You put them together. And when you finish the, the last two piece here, you put on the card, yeah? So you fix it, glue it on the card. But remember, if this is a look, if this is the middle of the card, you have to put this middle line in right in the middle. So you can open and close, it will fly out for you. Yes, so make sure your middles are matching up. Yeah, and of course, if you, the clouds is the same. So cut a shape like cloud and then fold it in half. Yeah, so you can fold it in half, cut the clouds, of course, yeah. The same method as a kite. And then you just put them together. And then you can put as many as you want on the side until you are happy to put them onto the card. Fantastic. That's okay. really helpful. Thank you, Yurong. So okay. if you need to go over that again, um, this will be recorded. So you can go over the recording and play that again. And you can make your kites ready in time for Chinese New Year, which would be fantastic. So Yurong, we do have some questions for you, if that's OK. Yes, um, yes. The first one is from Noah. And it's how long have you been an illustrator for? How long I have been illustrated for? Um, how long, how old I am now? <laughs> how long I would say? Uh, possibly. So I, okay. I think I illustrated books at least maybe thirty five years ago. But uh, when I I when I I started to do, uh, to focus on doing picture books, I would say maybe ten years ago. Okay. Because I had, uh, so I went to Royal College of Art, and then I I was a full-time mom for 13 years old, for 13 years. 
So then after 2013, so 10 years ago, I start I started work properly. Brilliant, thank you. And our next question is from Archie. And Archie's asking, do you have a favorite book out of all of the ones that you've illustrated? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Arch, thank you for the question. Do you know I dressed up for this book today? Do you see the colors? They're beautiful this colors. Color to, this, this, all these clothes and my jewelry, I, uh, I, I, I found discovered them from the cardboard sale. Yeah. I go to Cup to sell each Sunday. It's very interesting. You can find very interesting things. And here is a parrot. So this is a ladybird. And this is sunflower, a librarian from Shanghai Library. She knitted a cro um Jake, what is the word? A cro crochet. Crochet. Crochet for me. So it's a sunflower. It took her a week to do. Okay, my yeah. favorite book is here. So you can read it. Have you seen the magpie? So why I say it's a, my favorite, because it's very special. The book itself, it's seven meter, more than seven meters long. So if you, I cannot really open properly. So if you open, so it's a long piece about a boy lived in nine, 900 years ago in Chinese Song Dynasty. And he was looking for a magpie Magpie in Chinese culture means happiness and luck. So eventually, so I can't, uh, sorry, I can't, I just cannot pull the whole thing up. So eventually he found the magpie. And uh, what the luck the magpie brought to him was he started to learn how to write, how to paint. He became a very famous painter, painted the painting on the backside. So this is the painting called uh, during the festival during uh, festival along the river during Qingming Festival. So it's a spring festival, and this is a real Chinese painting. The size is this is the real size of the painting. It's over five meters long. It's talk about a capital city in Song Dynasty all the life. And inside of this book, I have hide six game for you. So all these characters, I only show you one page, first page. I hide them in the old painting. So for example, Jake, could you spot anything here? I think I can see a little dog. Yes. And the boy, do you see the little dog and a boy in the boat? Yep. So this is where I hide them. Each page, I hide them and you have to find them. So it's using games to kind of yes. introduce you to a really traditional painting and explore yes. that painting. Yeah, because the painting, the color, because the painting painted on silk over the years, color, become like a tea color is very difficult. And in this book, in this painting, they are over 800 characters. So if you want to try to find them, that would be a good challenge. So this yes. is what I like this book. And look, the color just match me, yes? Thank you. So our next question, and this is a really interesting one, is what you use for the paper cut? Do you use a Stanley knife or scissors or? Oh, that's a very good question. Now you, you I now you know my secret weapon. <laughs> so I, of course, bigger cut. I use bigger scissors, yeah. But like a small, very little ones. For example, the leaf, I cut here. I use uh, scapels, so it's a little bit. Uh, it's it's like this. But uh, it's not recommended for children. Yes. So it's because it's very sharp. And you need to be very careful. I only use it for very little details, but okay. otherwise I have a, like a different, this is a very big scissors. I have different sizes of scissors yeah. to help to cut different shapes. Brilliant, thank you. And another question that we've got is around what sort of qualities or skills do illustrators need to have? What a question, I love this <laughs> question. I want to say 
it's a love, it's a passion. I believe everybody, especially for all the children today in front of the screen, I would say you are all fantastic artists. You just needed to what you you needed to. I think most important thing is, is you can draw. You like to draw, of course. We needed to draw. Or for me, it's not only draw. I need to cut the paper. But the most important thing is use your eyes. Look out in the nature or or friends around you or pe people in front of you, parents. Anything you are interested in, you want to express by your hands, pencil, color. Just go for it because it's almost like a, sometimes you're so happy you want to hang a song. It's the same. Just find whatever you have, like on the beach, use your finger in the sand. You can draw uh, on the road. If you take a walk in the countryside, find a stick on the ground, anything. Everybody can be an artist. And I believe children are the best artists. I think that's a lovely answer. Um, yeah, I totally agree. Um, I think that idea of going out and finding inspiration is incredibly important. I've got a question from the reading agency here. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest tip you have for any students watching um, that would like to become an illustrator when they're older? Uh, what is it? I would say you really have to think about this is what your passion you have to be very passionate about what you are doing. So yeah. for myself, I studied the fine art in China, then I come to the Royal College of Art. So I actually, I have, I have been a graphic designer and I was a designer for patchwork and I was a designer to, for a magazine. So I tried many different things. Eventually, of course, thanks to Quentin Blake, Eventually, I do children's picture books. This is, I find, you know, like a, sometimes if you are tired or if you are low, you are not in the best mood. But whatever it is, whenever it is, when I sit in front of my desk, start to draw or cut, this is everything. It's everything is uplifting. Everything is full of joy. So what it is, it's a passion. You really need to be passionate about what you do. And then everything comes from your heart. I think that's a really good point. And I think that really comes across in your illustrations too, Yurong. You can see the joy and the passion in everything that you do. And I think that's a really nice place to, to draw this to a close. A big thank you to all of the schools and libraries that we've had watching, the Holy Cross, Wood Green, Harlebury, Newton Prep, Dorset, Harrow. It's incredible the range of people that we've had here. And I'm just going to hand back to Chris to, to formally close, if that's okay. Yeah, of course. Um, thank you so much for all of your questions, for tuning in. I learned a lot today. Um, and yeah, I was really curious and just wanted to know. Um, sorry, I hope you can't hear that pinging in the background. <laughs> um, but yeah, I um I was I, I learned a lot and I was just really interested because I'm always interested to know how we can get young people into the arts and how to inspire them. Cause I guess there's a lot of different pathways, or at least speaking to illustrators that I know, there's a lot of different styles and, and pathways. And I guess it's it's fun to sort of explore that. So thank you so much for joining us, Yurong. Thank you for making my job infinitely easier, Jake, and <laughs> hosting that beautifully. 